Hello, in this video I'm going to go over a modelling with differential equations question. Fairly familiar situation here which relates to something called Newton's law of cooling. Although you don't need to know that terminology in a maths paper, but I thought I'd mention it anyway. Um, it sets it up uh, for us. It tells us what the variables and units are. T is in minutes and theta is in degrees C, which is the temperature. And we've got it cooling. We've got an initial condition when t is equal to naught, theta is 160, and when t equals to 10, theta is equal to 125. Uh, say so the first bit is really quite basic. It says assume the temperature, the rate of decrease, rate, remember that normally involves time, d theta by dt, is constant, but it's decreasing. So I'm going to put a minus there which would mean that our k is actually a positive constant. Uh, you get away with putting a positive k there and saying that k is negative, but it's much better to put the minus k in. So it makes it explicit that it's decreasing because k is positive constant. You don't need to say that, that but I'm just making that constant. OK, so um, so therefore the rate of it's decreasing at a rate of minus k. So that's the first mark, very easy mark. The second one, well, really, this is just a this is basically a linear model. So we could just kind of use that because we know that every in, after ten minutes it's gone from one sixty to one two five. So that's thirty five there. OK, 35. So you can see that, you know, it's going down. K is actually going to be equal to 3.5. And you could just use that and just normal kind of straight line, linear kind of stuff to do it. You don't really need to do a differential equation. But I do find that students want me. This is what they tend to do. So although it kind of offends me a little bit because it's a sledgehammer to crack and not, I'm going to do it this way. Solve the differential equation. Separating the variables couldn't be easier here. dt just goes to the other side. So we have theta is equal to minus k t plus c. Now we can use our boundary conditions when t equals to naught. t equals to naught. Theta equals to theta equals to one sixty. So that gives us C is equal to 160. So we have theta is equal to minus KT plus 160. And the K will be 3.5 because, as I say, it's reducing by 3.5 because it's reducing a constant rate. But let's go through the motions because, as I say, that's what many I find students prefer me to do because we're just applying a kind of turn in a handle. When T is equal to 10, Theta is equal to 135, or 125, should I say, 125. So we have uh, 125 is equal to minus k times by 10 plus 125, which gives us k is equal to plus 160, should I say. Which gives us k is equal to 35 over 10. Lo and behold, that's equal to 3.5. Because it's reducing at a constant rate, 3.5 degrees C every minute. So we didn't really need to do a differential equation. But I've done it that way. Only two marks, which is why there's only two marks. Because many of you feel free to, to just to go to this straight away, really. Because we know that it's reducing by... Three put so it's reducing by by three point five degrees C every minute, and it's initially at one sixty. So we could go straight to that. We didn't really need to do our differential equation. Okay, in this soil temperature. OK, so more sophisticated. Oh, state one limitation of this model. Well, obviously, it's just not going to the temperature's not going to carry on going down forever, is it? 
I mean, that's still a definitely. Uh, um, so it implies the, the limitation, the model implies temperature of cake. Cake continues to fall for forever, basically below freezing, below room temperature, below for you know, below whatever the minimum, whatever I forgot what the the value is, minus two hundred and seventy or whatever it is, it's absolute zero. It can't do that. So model implies temperature of cake continues to fall forever. Which can't be, which is impossible, which doesn't, which obviously, which doesn't happen. It will actually tend towards room temperature, which is where the next um, model comes in. Okay, so that's enough. You don't. There's only one mark, um, and that's that. Okay, I'm going to bit, do a bit of tidying up, and we're going to then go on to. The meteor part which is part b okay so the next the next part basically um does a much more real it say relates to newton's law of cooling and it assumes that the decrease in temperature is proportional to the difference between the temperature of the cake and the temperature of the room which seems a bit more defined as we say so the difference so we would have the decrease in temperature and say so let's let, uh, make it explicit that it's decreasing uh, theta minus um, which is the room temperature minus the room temperature so that's how did so the difference between the temperature of the cake and the room temperature is that Note that this is set up explicitly so that this is greater than zero. So that then we've got a, definitely got a decrease because we've got a minus k there. Okay, so don't get mixed up with your signs. And so that's our differential equation. Nice one mark uh, for that. Now we can do a bit more, a little bit more meaty stuff to get involved with here. Now we've got, we can do separate the variables we need to take this to this bit here together it needs to come together because it's a kind of entity in itself and that's got to go all you can't just take one bit because it's like we've got to take away it's a bracket basically so we need to take that together we've got theta on the right hand side so when we take it to the left hand side it comes on the bottom so that becomes theta minus 20 there d theta is equal to integral of minus k dt okay so that's a separating variable situation keep the k there i think any constants you don't really want to be having a k down the bottom here wouldn't be wrong definitely not. we don't really want the k there wouldn't be wrong but it just makes life harder keep the constant there that side Okay, so, okay, now, um, now integrating this is obviously an ln. Now the mark scheme puts a modular sign in it here and says condone a bracket, but I take a bit of exception to the word condone, like they tolerated it, um, and the modular sign uh, should be there. This is a contextual question, so I kind of anyway. They say it's okay not to have a bracket, but I think it, not to have a modulus. But I think it's actually better not to. So uh, because no modular sign since you don't have to write this, but don't worry about it too much. You can put a modular sign in if you want in because that's what the mark scheme says. So no modulus since we know that theta minus twenty is greater than zero as stated before. So I've taken it out from the start, so I'm going to have to mess around with that. Um, but anyway, that's fine. Hopefully that's uh, not going to worry us too much. 
So now we can work out our constants from our bit of information we have back to the start. When t when theta and t is equal to naught, theta is equal to 160. So that gives us that ln 160 minus 20 is equal to minus k0 plus c. So c is equal to ln 140. Let's put that back into our equation. ln theta minus 20 is equal to minus kt plus ln 140. I'm going to play around with the logs a little bit at this stage um, because if I take the if I kind of reverse this then I can say that minus kt is equal to ln theta minus 20 over 140 I'm going to leave it. Right, so now we, I'm going to use the next bit of thing. And I don't have to work out K at this stage. I could now rearrange and work it out at later time. But to work out K, we need to use the other kind of boundary condition. When, when T equals to 10, Then theta equals to one hundred and uh, one hundred. What did it say? One hundred and twenty-five. So we get minus k times ten is equal to ln one two five minus twenty over one forty. Now this bit here is minus zero point seven five. So k is equal to minus one tenth of ln zero point seven five. Okay, that's so I know what k is. Okay, so that's our that's our um, work out k. But now that notice the question says. They want theta in terms of t. So let's go back to this equation here. Now I'm not going to put this in. I know what k is. I just don't want to keep writing this around. I know what will happen. I'll have to stop miswriting things. It's a lot to write in one go. So I'm going to go back to k and just call it that. I know what k is, but I'm not going to. Because there's a lot of work to do here. Yeah, and I just don't want to keep having to write that constant as exact or work it out and write down some decimal continually so anyway we've got that so then we've got e to the minus kt um, undoing the logs e in both sides is equal to theta minus 20 over 140 and then we have theta um, if we times that by 140 and add the 20 we get theta well, let's just not rush it 140 e to the let's not rush it 140 e to the minus kt is equal to theta minus 20 then reversing that around we get theta is equal to 20 plus 140 e to the minus kt Okay, now I could, I'm going to write in just to be, we, we've got, we, we've got an exact value of k. So we could say where k equals to, but I'm going to work it out just in case they want that. They actually don't, but I don't, you know, without looking at the mark scheme, we can never be sure. So I'm going to work out an, uh, k to three significant things. So I'm getting k is equal to 0 0.288. So theta equals to 20 plus 140. 
e to the minus 0 0.0288 t okay but we know the exact value of k so i've got that stored in my calculator which is this thing here okay all right so that's almost it but we've still got to do the kind of which is a fairly standard thing we're going to use our two models to predict uh, to use predictions so let's do that it says find the two models uh, let's just make a bit of space for this here yeah that's fine we've got this is one model this is our model a which we did feels a little while ago now and this is our model b um, I'm actually going to maybe use a value from above there, but let's just go with this. So model A, so this is part question C, model A, we're doing part C. So it wants us to work out just to go when it predicts the temperature is 25. So when theta equals 25, we have 3.5 t is equal to 160 minus 25 from this equation here so we have t is equal to 160 minus 25 divided by 3.5 let's check that gives me the right number it's meant to come to it's meant to come to 38.6 but let's just check that divided by 3.5 that's uh, 38.6 indeed minutes and then for model for the second model I'm actually going to go all the way back to here because notice we don't want the other i'm not going to i'm not going to bother rearranging this one which is our final one it'd be much better to use the formula we had earlier where k, k was um where t was almost in terms of k so we've got minus k and remember i got that stored on my calculator times by t is equal to oh, i could go to this one even that one be the ln 25 take away 20 over 140. Okay, now I've got to say, remember, k is approximately equal to 0 0.0288, but I've got it stored on my calculator. Um, so I have t is equal to um, minus 1 over. 0 0.0288 ln 5 over 140 and that comes to 115.8 so the difference is the difference between those two which is 115.8 take away the 38.6 which comes to 77 minutes. Um, and uh, it's not clear from the scheme whether it wants units in the, the um, but put the units anyway, just uh, in case, because I certainly know from a previous question, they penalise lack of units. OK, so that's it. Um, not bad for the last question on the paper. First model, just a linear model, very basic model. And the second model, exponentials, Newton's law of cooling. Although we don't need to know that particular term. And that is it. Okay, hope you found this useful.